Today, the dynamite fish. Starting off the episode, as always, with a fishing quest. Haha! -ha! We're looking for an accessory, survey says. Ah! So hello everybody, my name is Python and welcome back to another episode here of the Let's Play series. I do hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Thank you so much as always for all of your lovely support throughout this series. I very much do appreciate it. Now of course if you do want to continue showing your support for the series, the best and easiest way to do so is simply to drop a like. But of course if you want to go on further, use code Python when ordering any CDK nature drinks or to get 5% off any of my Apex gaming PCs. So then, today ladies and gentlemen is building day we have three further pylons that we can get we've got the desert pylon we've got ourselves the mushroom biome pylon and the cavern pylon okay so the plan was that we're gonna go ahead and convert one of these sky islands here into a mushroom biome okay the cavern biome pylon i'm not entirely sure what my plans are for that just yet but of course we do have ourselves the desert over here which we are a, going to make a pylon base out, and B, make a proper surface lake out. I mean, yeah, the lake we used in the last episode was this one just about here, and that still did technically count as a desert lake, but yeah, I want to make a proper one at the surface here. I just had another idea as well, ladies and gentlemen. We still don't have a custom crimson biome in our well yet. Now, instead of going ahead and converting one of these islands into a space city, what I'm going to do is actually convert one into a crimson biome instead. So we'll have a crimson biome, a graveyard biome, and a mushroom biome. I think those three would work absolutely brilliantly. So yeah, that's what we're going to go ahead and do. Now, in terms of the space city, I was kind of thinking we'd just manually go ahead and create it way up in the sky above our world spawn. I feel like that'd be a nice idea very much later down the line because, yeah, we're not doing that right now. We will do the space city later on once we get access to space-related materials, I guess. So then, the first build we are going to do is the desert pylon base and we're going to be taking on one of your guys' suggestions in that we're going to make ourselves a giant cactus base and each of the sort of arms of the cactus is going to contain an NPC house. So 252 cacti from this desert alone. Um, okay, well maybe if we combine that with the cacti from the corrupted desert, maybe we'll have enough? Question mark? I certainly hope so. Ah, uh, it's times like this where I miss the architect NPC, my friendos. I truly am spoiled with my modded playthrough, huh? Ah, goodness me. <laughs> Be gone, Dr. Bones. Hey, we got the archaeologist's hat. <laughs> Oh, that's not something I feel like I get very often. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So after smoothing off the terrain just a little bit here in the desert, I do believe the time has come. It is time to begin on our cactus base. This should certainly be a different thing for your boy to try. So let's go ahead and uh, try to make a bit of a start here. So what do we think, guys? We've got ourselves a bit of a cactus frame here. I think this looks kind of decent. Right? I feel like we've got the proportions done pretty well here. I must admit, though, it did take quite a while. This is not like a, I did this thing first time and had no issues with it kind of deal. Oh, no, I did have plenty of issues. Mostly with getting the proportions correct. But you know what? I feel like I've done a pretty okay job. The only thing I might say is maybe the central section needs to be maybe two or three blocks taller. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, give that a little bit of a go here. Get ourselves back up top here. Get rid of that. Uh, yeah. Okay, do you know what? I think that looks way the heck better. Goodness me, ladies and gentlemen. This is a very, very green build indeed, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it looks good though. I like it, man. All right. How do the cactus walls look in conjunction with the stuffs here? Uh, I can't really tell. It's really dark in here. Wow. Looks pretty cool though, eh? Looks pretty cool. I don't mind it one bit. All right. Uh, maybe a couple bits of lighting in here. Maybe a cactus lantern or two. I feel like 
would work kind of nicely inside this place here. Uh, we've got ourselves some little spaces here for maybe some chests as well. So we're going to have all sorts of stuff going on here. I kind of figured that what we could potentially do with this uh, whole area is we go ahead and we use it to store all of our desert related stuffs, right? You know, things like sand, maybe desert related weapons and stuff like that. So the good news is it's about to become nighttime and as a result of that we should be able to relocate some NPCs inside of the new cactus base and therefore be able to purchase ourselves a desert pylon. Oh snappers, it's about time isn't it my friend knows. But anyways, we're back over here now. Things are looking good. What I'd like to do is actually re replace this with perhaps a workbench instead because as a result of doing that I can put a furnace in there. Yeah, alright. Looking good, baby. Looking good. So this could be like a proper little storage bit. This could be like a bit of a utility bit, I guess. I mean, why not, man? We've got ourselves a nice looking area here. We've got ourselves some vine ropes here. I figured that would be a nice idea so we could actually get up and down the different layers here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like it when things are starting to look good, my friend. Those, it does make me feel good about myself. Hell yeah. Ah, the old favorite combiner apparently is the one to use around here. The nurse and the arms dealer. Beautiful. All right, so if I was to just head away here real quick, what should happen is both of them should spawn in. They have. We go on over to the arms dealer and we should be able to buy ourselves a desert pylon, right? Uh, yep, there it is. Hey, love to see it, my friends. Love to see it. Okay, we actually don't need a workbench or whatever it is down here. So we are going to put the desert pile right about there. Yeah. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we can teleport to the desert. Yeah. Oh, I love it when a plan comes together. I so do. All right. So, uh, yeah, if you guys have any suggestions as to the sorts of things we could go ahead and do with the remaining space here, then do, of course, leave them in the comments area down below. I'd be more than interested to see your guys' suggestions. I guess before moving on, though, one thing I could potentially do is maybe just add in a couple of windows. You know what? I've actually got a very, very strange idea as to what I could do with this space over here. If I was to go ahead and place in a couple of dirt blocks, add in some grass seeds, put a sunflower on top of it. <laughs> that looks so silly. There's a sunflower inside of our cactus. Oh, I love it. I love it. That's absolutely fantastic. So then, with the desert pylon base just about done, that just leaves us with going ahead and making ourselves a nice custom lake here. Alrighty, let's have a quick break to go ahead and do ourselves a new fishing quest. We're looking for the mudfish. Alright, an accessory please. Ah, still not an accessory. Alright, desert, I'm sorry buddy. But this is for your own good. Here we are. Oh, man. This is going to be one wide fishing lake, apparently. All right. We need to go ahead and do, like, another sort of layer of explosionies. All righty. It is time to start filling up this big old lake here. So, yep. It's going to take a while. I might as well go get myself a freaking cup of tea while this is happening, yeah? I must admit, I am fairly surprised that we haven't managed to get ourselves the bottomless water bucket just yet. Because I'm pretty sure that method would be way quicker than doing this little method here with the uh, infinite water from a bucket, right? So, yeah. It'd be kind of nice if we had that. Bottomless water bucket, maybe the super absorbent sponge. Those two things would be beautiful in building. Is somebody gonna tell me why there's a squirrel in the desert? That is not typically something you would find in a desert, is it? Yes, you should probably get out of it. It's a little bit hot here for you. <laughs> So then, here we are, ladies and gentlemen, a gigantic desert lake finally, and a nice desert pylon base. For now, we are going to call this area done. We'll probably come back to this area later in the series just to spruce it up a little bit. Maybe add a couple more builds to make this look like a nice little desert settlement, and then, uh, yeah, I'll be pretty happy with it. So, the next thing we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen, is we are going to make ourselves a mushroom floating island, and we're going to do it above the dungeon right about here, because then it's Essentially, we have ourselves quick teleport to the dungeon, which is going to be very, very useful for grinding purposes later down the line, eh? Holy smokes! Okay, 947 glowing mushrooms. Yeah? 
Yeah, that'll do the job real nice like. <laughs> All right, 330 mud blocks. I'm not entirely sure that's going to be enough to do the whole shaboodle. But I'm pretty sure that mud is renewable, right? Yeah, look at that. You just go over to a water source with a dirt block and you can transmutate it into a mud block. Yeah. I wonder if I'll be able to use the golden NPC combo in the mushroom biome to get the mushroom biome pylon. Now, obviously, ordinarily, you would require the truffle NPC, which is gotten in hard mode. But sadly, we're not in hard mode. Not just yet, anyway. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen. This is the island we are going to be transforming into a mushroom island. I'm pretty excited for this. So let's go ahead and begin by chopping down the tree. And then we'll pretty much replace all of the dirt here with mud. And then we should be pretty good to go in terms of planting down the mushroom seeds and having the mushroom grass spread pretty quick like. Oh, for goodness sake, man. I'm trying to have a nice peaceful time building myself a mushroom island. But no, the harpies, man. The freaking harpies. Question, how does one make a calming potion? I cannot remember. I need to go ahead and find out because to have ourselves a calming potion up at the Sky Island there would be very, very nice indeed. So if I was to go ahead and give you a bottle of water, uh, let's have a look here. Calming potion requires the damselfish, which... Funnily enough, he's gotten on a sky island. So, yep, that's a thing we're going to have to do and contend with. Oh, boy. Hey, guys, you want to know the coolest thing about going ahead and replacing all of these dirt blocks with mud? We continue to get a supply of mud blocks inadvertently by going ahead and transmutating the dirt into mud, right? So, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I ran out of mud blocks. Oh, wait. No, I haven't. <laughs> Alrighty, the entirety of the dirt on this Sky Island has now been replaced with mud. So that means the time has come. We are going to start spreading some mushroom grass seeds throughout this place, my friendos. Ideally without dying to the freaking harpies, because harpies suck. I wish they'd all die in a hole. I don't want them around here, man. Go away. There we are. All right, and now we play the waiting game pretty much, my friendos. Uh, I'll tell you what, while that's going ahead and uh, spreading around, maybe we try to use this time productively in that we do another fishing quest because it's me. I like doing fishing quests. And we also go ahead and try to begin on a bit of a cavern pylon base. What you got for me, Buttski? Sky Lakes, for goodness sake, I was literally just on a Sky Island. <laughs> Maybe we definitely do need to go ahead and make a bit of a sky lake. Maybe what we could do is add the lake in underneath the main landmass here. Like, maybe we put it sort of in the cloud layer. Here they come. Oh, no, 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 no. No more. No more, please. I don't want no more of this. Got him. Accessory? Question mark. Oh, yes. Yes. We got it. 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 Yes. Yes, 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 and yes again, ladies and gentlemen. We actually have the ability to do this thing. <laughs> there it is. The fish finder. Oh, gosh. Right, literally the final accessory we need now is the life form analyzer. The one that allows you to detect rare enemies nearby. And that's it. We will have the cell phone in vanilla Terraria, possibly before hard mode. That is amazing. <laughs> So then, time for the cavern layer building, eh? Where are we going to do this? I've got absolutely no idea. I mean, in the dungeon itself, sounds like a pretty good way to go, potentially. Right? I mean, uh, I don't know. Having easy access to the surface dungeon is cool. The corruption is right there as well. So there's like multiple reasons to actually have a pylon up at this sky island here. Uh, but yeah, having one down in the dungeon could be a good idea. Potentially. I am realizing, however, that we do not have a great deal of pylons on the left-hand side of the world here. Uh, do we want to do something about that? Is the question, I guess. I wonder if you could put the cavern pylon in the underworld, actually. Because if you can, then I would totally put it right up against the right-hand side here. 
Because then we could just summon in Wall of Fleshes just over and over and over again. I think we're going to go ahead and give it a go. We're going to make ourselves a hell build today, my friends. For the first time in my personal Terraria history. This is going to be epic, bro. Hey, here we are. Oh, snappers. Oh, that's a lot of blocks there. We've still got 450 demon. Oh, that is ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> it's a shame that we don't have ourselves any living fire blocks, though. It has to be said. I wouldn't have minded that at all. Because then we would have been able to go ahead and add a little bit of animation to the build, eh? Oh, we could totally put these little bits of furniture down there, though. Oh... Okay, okay, your boy's mind is surging with ideas. Let's get down there. Let's get over to the far right hand side and Let's see how about making ourselves a bit of a base and hoping that we can still put a pile on down here I certainly hope so at least on here unlike the calamity death mode series I am not going to get spammed to heck with voodoo demons Honestly the spawn rate of those guys if you guys didn't see my latest calamity death mode episode the spawn rate of the voodoo demons is far too much on there like literally every mob and i'm not even exaggerating when i say it every mob that spawned was pretty much a voodoo demon it was just utterly ridiculous all right ladies and gentlemen here we are at the extreme far right hand side of the world i've actually had to get rid of the mini map here just so i'm able to see what the devil it is i'm doing so Ladies and gents, let's begin this thing, shall we? I think probably the first thing we'll do is go ahead and sort of rid this landmass. I wonder if we are able to get NPCs to live down here. I wonder if that would mean that the spawn rates down here would decrease enough to the point where we might actually be able to go ahead and, uh, you know, do a little bit of uh, lava fishing down here, right? I mean, that'd be pretty cool, huh? Ah! Well, that's not going to help matters, is it? Nah. Oh, uh, look at me running along with my little froggy friends. They're so adorable. Look at the way they run around. <laughs> huh. Interestingly, I don't appear to be able to make like obsidian workbenches or anything like that. Huh. Little bit peculiar that that doesn't seem to be the case. Maybe it's made it like a different location altogether. All right, well, uh, let's go ahead and try to figure this out. So we've got ourselves some little drainage areas here. So just in case lava slimes manage to get in, then uh, we should be just about good to go, my friendos. With that said, though, there does appear to be a couple of uh, little straggly boys down here. Maybe the obsidian furniture can only be obtained from the underworld houses. I mean, it's it's entirely possible. So if I was to go ahead and use the demon conch again... Okay, cool. So it sends me directly to the center here. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of an obsidian furniture scrounge session. <laughs> See, this is more like it. We've got obsidian doors. We've got obsidian candelabras and paintings and all sorts of stuff that is probably going to make our little base look way the heck better. I really do like the chandeliers and various lighting bits, it has to be said. So yeah, I'll go ahead and take that obsidian lamp, for example. I'll go ahead and take this other chandelier, for example. There's the workbench with a candle and a chair. Yeah. All right. Very cool. We're picking up all the things. Yeah, I never thought in the entire time I've had a career on YouTube that I would ever be going ahead and scrounging for furniture from these underworld hell houses. I never thought I'd see the day. Genuinely, I never thought I would. Ah. <laughs> uh, say what now? Well, interestingly, the sound of the walls being placed is happening, but everything else doesn't seem to be placing? Eh? What's happening? I'm very confused. Right, okay, so we are now... Oh, for goodness sake. Hang on a minute. Hang on, we've got some annoying cold callers. Or should I say warm callers? Uh, well, let's go ahead and see if we can get the demolitionist down here, shall we? Where is the demolitionist? Oh, demo! There you are. That is very peculiar. There are no walls there, but we very clearly placed them because you could hear the sound of the walls being placed. Is it because we're at the edge of the world that that's being caused? This very peculiar bug? I've got no idea. Uh, okay. Uh, I can't remember who else it was that liked the underworld slash underground. I think it might be the tavern keep. Oh. Hey, cool. Right, so if I was to just sort of uh, roam away from this place, 
Oh, snappers. There they are. They're inside the base. Can we do this thing now? Oh, my God. There it is. You can actually <laughs> put a cabin pile on in the underworld. What the hell, man? Oh, wow. That is... This has been such a strange build. But, yeah. It's kind of worked out, hasn't it? Oh, that's interesting. Oh! Oh! Oh, that is very, very weird. So if you're fully zoomed in, that kind of messes you up a bit. All right, let's go for 140% here. And as a result of that, I can now see the background walls. That is such a peculiar bug. <laughs> I don't know if any of the Terraria devs are watching this, but uh, there you go. You got a bug to fix. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So what do you think, eh? I feel like we have done a fantastic job of this hell base here. And more to the point, functionally speaking, it is up and ready and part of our pylon network, eh? absolutely brilliant. Just absolutely brilliant. I, I honestly couldn't be happier with how this build has gone. I truly couldn't be happier. I wonder what the NPCs think of the underworld. Ah, no one around. I can test new bombs without creating a graveyard for limbs. Dwarves are naturally drawn to the underground. It's in our blood. I love how well Paddy the Tavern Keep can handle a container of fireball. Ha! <laughs> Fantastic. Alright, what about you, buddy? Finally, some peace and quiet. Peace and quiet in the underworld? Are you insane? Okay, you're a bit of a strange one, aren't you? Dwarthen, the demolitionist, is one crazy little drinker. I love it. Ah, oh, it's a match made in heaven, these two, isn't it? <laughs> Let's find out once and for all. Could we have actually made the obsidian stuff into furniture? No. Okay, you can only find the obsidian furniture then. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So with the hell base done, I think it's time for another fishing quest break. And then we are going to get right on with our final build for today's episode. Which, of course, is going to be the Mushroom Island. Let's check out the progress here. Oh, snap. Look at that. It's completely overcome with mushroom grass. Yeah. All right. Where are we going to go this time? The surface tundra. Oh, literally first go. Oh, my word. This episode has just been beautiful in terms of luck so far, hasn't it? <laughs> All right. What do you got for me this time? Another fisherman's pocket guy. Believe it or not, we don't need it now, son. So once we get access to a hallowed pylon, I think what I'll do is I may go ahead and custom create a large hallow farm area, which may have like a corruption or crimson farm next to it right and then we could put the hallowed pylon down there right so then we've got easy access to a nice farm grinding type area so yeah anyways the final pylon for today is the mushroom one so let's begin on the mushroom pylon build to be honest with you ladies and gentlemen i don't actually know what i'm going to be doing for a mushroom pylon build i really really don't maybe i could make some like giant mushrooms or a little conglomeration of giant mushrooms. Maybe we could have like two mushrooms, one for each of the NPCs that are going to be going there, and then one sort of smaller mushroom for the pylon itself, eh? I think maybe the first thing we do there, ladies and gentlemen, is we try to get that mushroom flying lake thingy done first. And here we go, my friends. Time to fill this bad boy up with water. Hopefully it won't take too long. Alright, so as you can see, we are getting the central mushroom done first. This is going to be the one that contains the pylon and of course a little bit of a dip down to the fishing lake here. So yeah, we should be nice and safe going ahead and doing a bunch of fishing stuff here, my friend knows. So yeah, all is looking well, baby. All is looking well. I mean, it has to be said, it does look like a bit of a strange looking mushroom here, but um, I think I can roll with it. I think I can roll with it, my friend knows. So we need two more of these mushrooms, big enough to go ahead and contain NPCs in them, and then we should be absolutely golden, my friend knows. Alrighty, housing is suitable. I mean, technically speaking, this middle house here is is also suitable, the one that's going to be containing the pylon. Uh, there's plenty of other bits of furniture that I want to get in here, maybe a chest or two for a little bit of rudimentary storage. Maybe we could store some mushroom related stuff. I mean, eventually, of course, we'd like to have the auto hammer in here so we can make shroomite stuff. But uh, yeah, certainly for now, we've got some good stuff going on here, my friendos. The final mushroom base will be made on the right hand side here. And as with the desert area, we'll go ahead and sort of spruce this area up at a later date. Not valid housing. Ah, 
darn it. There's not enough space for the NPCs to move, huh? If I was to add a little bit more space on the inside here, let's go ahead and give it another go. Uh, how sick is now suitable? Hey! The traveling merchant has arrived on my Sky Island! <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure. Life form analyzer? Question mark? Ah, nope, not this time. Ah, big sad. Ah, well, never mind. We will get it eventually, my friends. We will get it eventually. What I am doing at this particular moment in time, for absolutely no reason whatsoever, is I'm going ahead and uh, making some slightly more realistic looking clouds that have a little bit of rain pouring out of them. Hey, I mean, I think that looks pretty cool. Even on the mini-map, they look more realistic. I love it. Absolutely love it. And to really finish off this place, ladies and gentlemen, as we're waiting for the NPCs to spawn in at nighttime here, I'm also going to go ahead and make myself like a nice rudimentary mini blue mushroom farm, okay? That should also help for this to more officially be classed as a mushroom biome. Oh, this place looks so much better at night. I tell you what, once we get ourselves some uh, blue torches, we should be able to go ahead and start lighting up this area just a little bit more. Alright, so the arms dealer is there. If I go over to the left-hand side, the nurse is now in as well. Right, mushroom biome pylon. Wait, oh, do you know what? I think it's because they're not close enough. Really? Are they still too far away from each other? All right. How about the die trader and stylist? Are you going to be selling? What are we looking for? Oh my god, there it is. Yeah. Oh, I didn't think that would work. Oh, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely brilliant. So all that leaves us to do now is to make sure that there are indeed NPCs at every single pylon going. So, uh, oh, okay. So there's not enough people at the ocean pylon. The good news is, of course, when you have got all of the pylons already purchased, you no longer need to go ahead and worry about which combinations are living where. As long as there are two NPCs at Every pylon, you are going to be golden, my friends. All right, so the arms dealer and nurse can return here. All right, let's have the golfer. And that should do it. All right, so, yep, he's just spawned in. All right, so that's one. That's a two. That's a three. That's a four. Five. Six. And seven pylons in a pre-hard mode Terraria pylon network. Eh? Pretty fantastic, isn't it? Technically speaking, there are only two more pylons to get. We have the hallowed pylon to get and the almighty one, the universal pylon, if we somehow manage to get 100% bestiary done. We have currently done 38.24%. Now, I imagine once hard mode comes around and obviously end game comes around, that's going to be boosted by quite a lot. So, all that's left to do now, my friends, is to go ahead and tidy up, do the comment of the day, and wrap up the episode. Uh, yeah. Oh, dude, to say that I am excited to actually have all of our biome pylons done is understatement of the century. I'm actually really excited about that. And the fact that we have it done pre-hard mode means that we won't have to worry about no annoying dudes in hard mode that are going to interrupt our building process. So yeah, top tip. Get this stuff done in pre-hard mode, for goodness sake. So here we are. Venom says, hey, Python, suggestion. You should make a corruption-themed build with the statues you obtained in the last episode. I think it would be a nice and new building idea. Have a great day, Python. Hey, you have yourself a great day too there, buddy. Hey, that's a really cool idea. I mean, it's just another completionist build at the end of the day. Uh, I'm not entirely sure that we're wanting to go for every single statue that's ever existed in Terraria, but certainly I would definitely like to go ahead and uh, proudly display the collection of statues that I have got. I mean, we have managed to get a fairly significant amount of statues during the course of this series, mostly because I was going ahead and trying to find myself a slime statue. We so happened to just sort of pick up all of these ones as well. So yeah, a corruption theme build. That would be a lovely idea. It really, really would. So in terms of pre hard mode, there's actually not that much more to do. We need to go ahead and overhaul the two Sky Islands. So we have ourselves a graveyard-themed one and a crimson-themed one, right? Now, obviously, the graveyard one would come first because as a result of having a graveyard, you could buy the alternate evil materials, for example, crimson seeds. And then we can make ourselves the crimson island, eh? 
Pretty cool stuff, my friends. And then after that, of course, we've just got the Wall of Flesh and hard mode will begin. So, ladies and gentlemen, for now, though, it's time to wrap up the episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you guys have enjoyed today's episode and today's builds that we've done here, then please do be sure, of course, to drop a like on the video. I'd very much appreciate it. If you guys have any feedback or suggestions regarding the builds we've done in today's episode, of course, the comments area is there for a reason. Hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to ding that bell if you don't want to miss out on my future Terraria episodes here. But for now... Thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic rest of your day, guys. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.